Don Bacon served nearly 30 years in the U.S. Air Force before retiring as a Brigadier General in 2014. He continues his service to America today in the U.S. Congress. That's where he represents Nebraska's 2nd District. He's got one of the most bipartisan records in Congress, but he says that reckless spending and energy policies by D.C. Democrats, that's responsible for the mess of the economy. And we need to flip the House red in November. Please welcome to the show Congressman Don Bacon. Congressman, I guess in fairness, I ought to ask, what ticks you off? <laughs> oh, there's, there's quite a good list. The first one is maybe Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see that. She, uh, she's pretty ruthless in the House, but she won't be the speaker around January. Isn't that good to hear? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that America will be better off when she is uh, maybe retiring and heading back to San Francisco. And I don't mind if they fly her back there the last time on a government jet just to say, bye-bye, I'd be fine. It'd be worth the flight. It would be worth the <laughs> flight indeed. Um, all this speculation about the election, and, and obviously much is at stake, much more than I think people truly can appreciate. We heard for a while there's gonna be a red wave. Republicans would definitely take the House. Now, may not be so big. What's your assessment? Where are we? Where are we going? Will the Republicans get their message right and get it to the American people? And how will this thing turn out? It seems like in April, May, and June, we were gonna pick up 30 or 40 or 50 seats. And then there's this perception, maybe with the Dobbs decision, which I don't buy, I'm a pro-life uh, person. Yeah. But also there were some victories that President Biden had uh, in the Congress. It, it appeared that maybe that lead got shrunk, but I, the polling in this past week, you're starting to see the Republicans picking up steam again. Uh, in the end, I think it's still too early. Uh, when it's all said and done, I think the average voter is going to be mad when they go to the grocery store. Yeah. They're paying 39% more for eggs, 19% more for milk, 25% more for energy. And who here is getting pay raises at those same amount? Mm. The average family has lost $5,000 in purchasing power. $5,000. Over a year, for a year. Wow. And so I think that, that will drive... I believe most, and then today, we just saw what happened with the stock market. So there's $3 trillion in lost savings accounts this year. And you know, Congressman, I think a lot of senior adults need to realize that, and, and they know this already, when the stock market really begins to falter, it's their retirement yes. that, that falters. If the stock market drops by 25%, that's their retirement that's tied up in those funds. $3 trillion in lost retirement money. $3 trillion. $3 trillion since January. And I've talked to so many folks in Nebraska, they're gonna have to delay the retirement a year or two. This is having a significant impact, but just day-to-day -day impact. When you're paying 30% more for, you know, on average it's 13% yeah. more for groceries, but for some it's even higher. Your pay's not going up that much. The average no. pay's gone up 4%. So the American con consumer, the American worker, is falling behind, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. In most big cities, crimes, crime is up 40%. Yeah. Murders, the assaults. And then you look at the border, and, it, and there's a lot of debate, what, you know, on a human, humanitarian, what do you do with people who want to come here for a new life? But 150 people are dying a day from fentanyl overdoses, yeah. which is coming up from more of the border. That is a crisis. You know, I, I'm so glad you brought up the fentanyl issue because mm -hmm. that's not a border issue. That's touching people in every one of the yes. 50 states. That stuff is getting everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is, uh, sometimes people say, well, you know, there's a 19-year-old kid, he overdosed. He didn't overdose. He took one time, yeah. something he thought was just an innocent, gonna make him feel better, even may marijuana. have been even in the right. middle. Yeah. Yes. And it was fentanyl laced, mm -hmm. and his mother found him dead in his room the next morning. And yeah. I, I mean, those are horrible stories that are happening yeah. to families up and down the economic scale. Just the other day, we had four kids overdose in Omaha. Ah. It's all over our country. And has our president gone to the border once? He has put no attention on the border. And the fentanyl is made in China, a lot of it, and it comes yeah. through the southern border. And I, I see this as a dereliction of duty, frankly. Uh, he has not protected. Americans by doing due diligence as a leader uh, on the border. And, you, and it's having an, an impact in Texas that we could never have seen two or three years ago. We had a county in Southern Texas that's 79% Hispanic. 
has never elected a Republican in 100 years. Mm. Re- just elected their first Republican. Congressman, you served in the military for a long time. You were uh, a Brigadier General in the Air Force. You don't get to be a flag officer without a, a successful and significant career. First of all, I salute you for your Thank service you. to this country. Mm-hmm. Thanks for your military record. But this week, we've read that the Air Force Academy is going all woke, and they're now instructing the the students at the Air Force Academy to be very sensitive about the proper pronouns to use and to make sure that there's diversity. I'm I'm curious. I know you've got your congressman hat on, but I want you to put your Air Force hat on and tell me, is it the real need for the Air Force to worry about diversity and whether or not we're saying the right pronouns? Is that more important than having a lethal fighting force out there? When I was home over the month of August, I heard from so many parents saying, we don't want our children to join the military right now because we want them to join the meanest, the toughest military in the world, defending the greatest country in the world. And they're hearing this more woke social engineering story. So the military, as a minimum, has a messaging problem right now. Now, I don't think it's as prevalent. You'll hear the incident here and there. I've been on the bases. I think they are focused on it. But what the average person's hearing is this day in and day out. If I'm the four star, if I'm Joe Milley, Secretary of Defense, I got a strategic communications problem and they need to fix it. Because the Army's only met 40% of its recruiting goals. 40%. And we, if we do, if that goes on for long, we are in trouble. And so we have to fit. When I I came in in 2016, we had half the airplanes couldn't fly. We were training our folks inadequately. So we had all these collisions at sea. We fixed that. So what I see now is a different readiness problem. We can't get enough good people in the service. And so the, they're going to have to come up with a strategy to fix this. And what attracts people in the military is about serving the greatest country in the world and being the meanest, toughest people on the planet to defend this great country. And that's what the, our folks have to communicate that. And I think there's not a person certainly here that wouldn't agree with that 100%. Right. If Republicans do take the House in November, uh, Realistically, what can we expect? Because I don't want to get our hopes too high. I realize they still don't have the White House and may or may not have the Senate. But but what does that mean practically for the average American citizen? Out of the U.S. House, under a Republican-led speaker, uh, you'll see the House clamp down on reckless spending. We're going to try to to get our budget and and start working towards that balanced budget, just like we did in the late 90s. We had a Republican-led House. Uh, you're going to see us push energy independence. We should not be reliant on any foreign power, maybe with the exception of Canada. Absolutely. <clears throat> so refreshing to hear that. Right. We have to identify what products in China that we cannot afford to have them shut off. So yeah. in other words, the supply chain, we need to study it. And those products that come out of China that we rely on, we got to have a plan to bring that back here or to our allies. So for example, rare minerals that we rely on, we should not have to rely on China for that. We are right now. We can do a lot of that right here in America, but because of our environmental standards and things that we're doing, we, we force the stuff overseas. So we need to re- relook at the supply chain and not be reliant on China. So those are some of the things we'll do on the economic side. On the American security side, you'll see the House push a secure border. We'll finish, we'll finish the physical security, hmm. add more technology, more courts. We'll work on, and we'll, we'll support our police as well. Uh, with it. We, we have a really big shortage right now in police recruitment. We're, we have to maybe partner with our local and states to help, re- help recruit you know, better law enforcement or more law enforcement. Yeah. We need more. I think you'll also see more oversight. There's been The Democrat-led House has done zero oversight on this administration. So we need to look at the DOJ, the yes, IRS, do. yep. and have them answer hard questions. Right? And I think there will be an outcry. <laughs> right that you have to do it, and a seething anger if you don't. People have that expectation. Congressman, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you, not just for being here. More than that, when a guy retires as a brigadier general, you don't have to go do the work of Congress. You could do anything you wanted to do, and every company in America would love to have somebody who made it to the rank of flag officer. But you decided to serve the people of Nebraska and the people of the country. And uh, I just want to say thank Thank you. you. And, and you're doing an effective job. We, what we do is we love our country. Well, yeah, and, and that's a good reason to do it. We, we live in the greatest country in the world. 
Ronald Reagan was the first guy I campaigned for at 13 years old in 1976. I love Abraham Lincoln. I love, I love what our country is, but you have to be involved to protect it. And that's Absolutely. what this is about. Thank well, you. God bless you for doing just that. Thank you. I know our audience is going to want to follow the congressman on social media. You can find the links to him, as always, at Huckabee.tv.